The new sprinkler system for the backyard has been installed and tested. It works great with no leaks. I filled in a bunch of the trenches, but left some of them unfilled. These will be for the electrical lines that bring power to the backyard. There's a few things that need or will need to be powered up. The gazebo has a light on top and an outlet in the back. The future spots of the greenhouse and shed need some lights and chargers. There will be a few outlets along the left wall just because I can. And in the back center, I'll eventually restore and reinstall a large street light that was originally in the location of the workshop. The sprinkler valves against the back wall need to be connected to a control box to be automated. The control box will eventually end up in the shed, but for now, I'll just attach it to the wall in that area. Last year, when I built the dog run, I added some electrical conduit just for this purpose. From a subfloor vent, I ran it down into the ground to the wall, then along the wall to this pipe sticking out of the ground. This is where I started the new conduit. I ran pipe for a short length until I got to the spot of the first outlet next to the pergola. These will all be weather rated GFI outlets, wired in sequential order. From that box, I ran more conduit along the wall to the spot of the next box. All this conduit is sitting in a trench that I already dug for the copper water line. From this box, I started running the conduit in the sprinkler line trenches. I worked my way to the back of the gazebo. The gazebo was already wired up with a switch for the light and an electrical outlet on the backside. The wire sticking out of the wood right here is where the electrical outlet was. It was old and corroded so I decided to redo the whole box. I moved some bricks and dug a short trench to be able to bring the conduit right up to the base of the post. I'll get to that box in a bit, but for now, I just continued laying conduit in the trench while I was in the groove. At this spot, I added in a junction box to allow a split off pipe for a large street light. Since the street light won't be added for quite a while, for now, I'll just have the pipe stick out of the ground and cap it. I continued running conduit in the trench until I promptly ran out of materials. The next day, I picked it back up at the gazebo to connect the first box to the two pipes. I used short, flexible tubes to bend the conduit around the edge of the deck and direct them straight into the new box. All right, most of the conduit was in place, so now it was time to start fishing wires. I've never done this before, so this is trial by fire. I was feeling gutsy and started with the longest and windiest stretch of pipe. This was a mistake because it didn't go well. The idea here is to vacuum a plastic bag attached to a special pole wire through the airtight pipe. The plastic bag is supposed to act as a sail and fly through the pipe towards the vacuum. I figured if I could do the longest stretch, the rest would be easy. Unfortunately, it didn't happen while working by myself. This would definitely take two people. I switched gears and tried fishing the wire in the shortest stretch of pipe. If it didn't work here, then I'd have to figure out a new method. It still wasn't easy, but it worked. Okay, now that the pole wire is through the pipe, I could attach the electrical wires to it and pull it back through. This is a 20 amp circuit and has quite a bit of length to run. So I decided to use 10 gauge wire to avoid voltage drop. I purchased 300 foot spools of wire and created this jig to be able to roll out the wire as it fed into the conduit. The black hot wire and white neutral wire are 10 gauge and the green ground wire is 12 gauge. I looped the pole wire to the first electrical wire and used a ton of electrical tape to secure it as well as the next two wires all together. I attempted to start pulling the wires through on my own, but right away it was clear I needed a second set of hands. The boss lady came out and helped a bunch with this process. 
She was at the other end pulling the string as I fed the wires. When it popped out the other end, I trimmed both sides to have enough slack to work with later on. The next spot to feed was the first section of underground in the line. It runs from the house underneath the dog run to the first outlet. Working as a team made this process exponentially easier. All right, now we're back to this spot. We've proved that the fishing method works, but now it's time to put it to the test. It was still a struggle. We tried a few different iterations of the plastic bag, different sizes, different knots, different ways of vacuuming. It would go into the pipe, but get stuck after about two feet. We then switched spots. And as the boss lady was vacuuming, it started working. It would move in short bursts and get stuck. So I pulled back on the string then let it go so it could move even more. It's like taking one step back to go three steps forward. It wasn't done yet though. We still had to pull the wires through this long stretch. This time, she fed the wires and I pulled. Oh yeah, almost there, one more. All right, that's good. Woo! The next stretch was relatively easy, but this time I had to run five wires. The extra hot and neutral wires are for the street light. I didn't have a box for the end of this stretch, so vacuuming the pull string through was a breeze. That's it. I went back and started wiring up the first two outlets in the circuit. These are weather rated GFI outlets. I used a pigtail for the ground wire, then wired the outlet in series. When I got to the gazebo, I had to connect the new wires to the old wires. I started trimming the wires, adding pigtails and stuff, but when you have old wires, you have old problems. And I had one of those. One of the old wires that goes into the pillar up to the light switch sheared off at the back of the box, making it completely unusable. Oh no. There's no way I could fish a new wire through that part of the pillar. So I decided to run all new wires to a new light switch box through a half inch flexible tube. I then finished wiring up this complicated section. I was super careful to make all the correct connections that it took almost an hour to do these two plugs. The bottom box became a single outlet and a switch for the future street light. And the top was the same setup from before as a switch for the gazebo. I finally got the parts for the far end of the electrical circuit. The conduit has to stick out of the ground in a funky way because of the foundation for the brick wall. I may fix it later, but for now it's fine. I ran the wires to a junction box where I can eventually tee off for the greenhouse and shed. I then continued up a bit to install the last planned outlet. Before filling in the rest of these trenches, I had one last thing to run, and that's the low voltage wires for the sprinkler valves. At first, I planned to run them in their own conduit line, but soon realized that this specific wire can be buried right into the dirt. I put the beginning of them in a junction box that dives into the ground. One wire could control six valves, so I had to use two. I put a piece of red tape on either end of one of the wires so I wouldn't mix them up later. 
I ran these wires to the other end of the yard because the control panel box will eventually be in the shed. I've done a fair amount of electrical work on this house already, so I was pretty darn confident that this would all work. Confident enough to fill in most of the trenches, because Doofy's stumpy little legs couldn't really jump the gaps and he kept falling in. Now it was time to tie all those wires into the power from the house. All of our electrical lines are in the attic, so I had to find a way to run a wire from the attic to the subfloor then I could pull it over to the conduit at the dog run. Luckily, our chimney is funky shaped and I had enough access behind the wall that I could fish a line through. I tried to work as efficient as possible, but I still had to go under the house into the crawl space four times and army crawl all the way to the chimney. There's not a lot of room to maneuver around. I'm a small guy. I stunt double for kids on TV and I still had to squeeze through some areas. Hansel was giving me some boofs because he didn't recognize me as I was finishing up all the connections. Though after this was done, it was time to test. It worked. I don't know what I would have done if it didn't, but I don't have to worry about that. All right, time to automate the sprinklers. I started by wiring up the valves. Each valve has two wires coming off of it. One wire on all the valves connects to the common wire. I chose the white one. Then the colored wires individually connect to a valve, which is how they're individually controlled. At the control panel, the other ends of the wires get hooked up. The white common wire goes into the common terminal. Then the colored wires go into the terminal that corresponds to their value. You could shuffle this up if you wanted to play risky roulette, but I made it easy on myself to remember the pattern at both ends. The numbers of the zones followed a rainbow sequence. Red, yellow, green, blue, black, brown was zones one through six in that order. I followed the same order to finish off zones seven through 10 with the next wire. This is a smart sprinkler box, which means I can control it with my phone from anywhere, and I don't even have to be at home. It's great, and I highly recommend choosing something with this function. Last thing to do is program the app and make sure all the automation works. I just followed the steps in the app. It was really easy. I tested each zone one by one. Some of the zones hadn't even been turned on yet, so it was really fun seeing the pressure pop the temporary caps. That last one got a ton of hang time. Now it's just great to be able to control watering the grass whenever, wherever. It's also a lot of fun to try and soak the dogs while they're playing around.
The gazebo looks great at night. This light has been inoperable for at least two and a half years. It's so cool seeing it working again. It's also kind of amazing that the bulb is still good. The boss lady wants to change the fixture, but she's indecisive, so it'll be a while until I have to swap it out. We want to add string lights all over the yard, so now there's easily accessible power to do just that. Okay, that's it for now. See ya! Sir, are you missing up the trenches? Sir. <laughs> Sir, you're putting dirt in the trenches.